Welcome to theCUBE, I'm Lisa Martin, on the ground at the Computer History Museum with the Association for Corporate Growth Silicon Valley. Tonight is their 13th annual Grow Awards and we're very fortunate to be joined by one of the co-hosts of the Fireside Chat, John Kayo. Welcome to theCUBE, dubbed Mr. Creativity and a Serial Innovator by The Economist. What does that feel like? Feels like uh, I can put it on my tombstone and rest. <laughs> Absolutely, so you have been leading in the fields of innovation, business, creativity for over 30 years. You've spent something at Page My Edges, a lot of time developing compelling learning experiences for innovators, for entrepreneurs, but you have an eclectic approach to that. Tell us about your eclectic approach. Well, I think uh, the idea that innovation is one thing is a bit of a myth, you know, the light bulb over the head or the lightning bolt. Innovation's really about a whole portfolio of disciplines that include creativity, storytelling, design thinking, digital fluency, collaborative skills, emotional intelligence, cultural intelligence, and entrepreneurship. So it's a, a complex blend of capabilities that allow you to generate ideas and develop them so they have value. That's innovation to me. Wow, that's fascinating. How do you, along those lines, what do you see kind of composes the ideal entrepreneur? What, what do you look for in companies that you provide advice to, um, especially if it's a startup? What does that entrepreneur that has those capabilities, what do they look like to you? Well, I think they come in all sizes and shapes. I mean, if I were to look for a bottom line, I would say to have the resilience to be able to change uh, and the flexibility to be able to see things outside of your frame of reference. You know, the, one of the problems with entrepreneurs is they tend to fall in love with their, their ideas or to tunnel into a uh, particular perspective. They become experts at what they're doing. And it's like the Zen Buddhists say, you know, it's really beginners, people who have porous minds that are able to create the new thing. And we know that, especially in Silicon Valley, you, pivoting is almost a way of life. It's almost an inevitable phenomenon. So I think being able to not fall in love with yourself and your ideas, being able to show flexibility and agility and stamina. Stamina is very important. You know, people sometimes ask me, well, how come you studied medicine and you don't practice medicine? I said, because medis medical school was the best training for being an entrepreneur because nobody works harder than an intern in a hospital, right? So it's some stamina the ability to organize your time, to take responsibility, to say, give me the ball, I will run with it. Right, what about patience? I imagine patience is probably a key attribute as well. Well, it can cut both ways. Some, sometimes it's good to be impatient because you, you can't wait to see something happen. Yeah. Or, you know, you uh, have a, you know, there's a difference between what you expect and how people perform or the speed with which things happen. So, you know, it's another one of these sweet spot things, but impatience can be useful also. Good to know. Yeah. So as we look at, you've been, as we mentioned in the intro, you, you are a veteran and a historian almost of technology. As we see kind of new tech and some of the hot things, AI, virtual reality, machine learning, that all have tremendous potential to dramatically impact business. What are some of the innovations that you see right now that are most interesting to you? Well, um, I'm involved with uh, the reimagining of education through technology, so that's interesting to me. And the ability of technology to allow learning and formal education to separate is really interesting because you have to ask yourself whether learning really necessarily has to take place in these things called schools with these things called teachers as much as it has traditionally. So technology is in a position to disrupt uh, education. I think uh, healthcare is poised for disruption. We're not going to have hospitals and outpatient clinics and primary healthcare environments the way we have them today in 15 or 20 years. And I think, you know, in some respects, the people inside these institutions are the ones who are the last to get the memo. So it's places like Silicon Valley where a designer can talk to an investor, can talk to an ethnographer, can talk to an entrepreneur. It's where some of these disruptive ideas are really going to be hatched. Speaking of ideas, tell us about edge makers. I love your your business oh, card. card here, very sustainable, half the size of a regular business card, but tell us about EdgeMakers. Sure. Why did you found it, and what have some of the outcomes been so far? Sure, so EdgeMakers um, is my attempt to create a learning approach methodology system for young innovators to become highly effective ahead of schedule. We live in a very troubled world. Young people tend to be more idealistic than previous generations. 
they want somebody to show them how to make stuff happen. So whether it's high school or college age students, Edge Makers is a combination of know-how and technology that's distributing a learning experience globally. We have uh, students now in 11 countries around the world. We've just gotten started, really. But uh, the notion is that we're empowering young people to make a difference ahead of schedule. And that these are the skills, not taught in school, that you have to have. I love that. I think it's absolutely fantastic advice. Well, John, we wish you the best of luck in your fireside chat tonight. Thank we you. thank you so much for taking the time Thanks to join us on theCUBE. Thanks. We want to thank you for watching theCUBE. Again, we are on the ground with the Association for Corporate Growth. Thanks for watching. Thank you.